Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of Fitz Rupee Cast featuring Dawn of War 2 Retribution. Red Rupee here with you, calling the games for you, as always. I know it's been a little while since I've done a cast at all. It's been two or three weeks, actually. And I just went on a little hiatus, kind of a Dawn of War myself out on this game. And uh, <laughs> don't laugh at that, I apologize. But I've been catching up on my backlog of games and things like that. This past weekend, I went up to Boston for PAX East, which is Penny Arcade Expo, huge gaming convention on the East Coast of the U.S., for those of you not familiar with it. Ran the jam space and stuff with MAGFest, helped out with a bunch of stuff over there, and I just had a blast. But anyways, this isn't my personal blog. Let's hear about what's been going on in Dawn of War 2 recently, because there has been quite a bit that's been going on in my absence. Uh, unfortunately, in less positive news... Uh, a couple weeks ago, Relic actually had some pretty heavy layoffs uh, go down uh, a couple weeks back, and uh, rumor has it that either all or most of the Down of War 2 support staff actually got let go or moved to other projects during that. Now, I haven't talked to anyone myself about that, but uh, I haven't talked to BC or anything like that, so uh, if I find out anything about that, uh, I'll let you guys know as soon as I do. But uh, other than that, uh, we also have the ESL Spring League. Uh, which has started off recently, and I, there may actually be a couple spots left in that, but uh, I'll have to let you guys know as I find out about it. And other than that, uh, Niam from Warrior Nation Clan has actually started his own tournament series, which is pretty cool, and uh, includes some Steam prizes for you. I believe he's offering to the top winners Steam prizes off of their wish list, so uh, that's pretty cool to get some Steam games out of some Dawn of War 2 tournaments. And uh, he's also got a pretty cool spin on it. He, you have to kind of pull, uh, pick a selection of three different heroes, and then you kind of steal from your opponent's selection as you move up the ladder. So it should be a pretty fun twist. There's more details about that on the thread as we get on to it. And uh, I'll put links in the descriptions for all those people uh, that like to check that stuff out. I always put links in the descriptions when I mention these various events and things like that. Anyways, let's not spend too much time with my rambling before we get started here. It's been so long. Let's get into this game. As you can see, we're kind of looking at this center uh, red darkened crater in the middle of Ashes of Typhon. And Ashes of Typhon is probably, uh, personally, one of my least favorite single player maps. I love the aesthetic of the map. The art style is very cool and it's just a neat looking map as we've been kind of flying around here a little bit. But it is a very, very spread out map, and as we take a look at the players, you can see that that's probably going to be disadvantageous to the Space Marine player more so in the beginning than the Orc player, as uh, as you always hear Space Marines talking about squad independence, which means these scouts and these tactical Marines early game really can't do much on their own. They always kind of need the support of at least another squad or possibly a hero. And uh, as you can see, the two victory points, con uh, the two natural VPs contested way out in the back here. And then on the uh, other side, we've got the two power. This first one, pretty easy to defend, but this far out one tends to not get built up as it's easy to bash. Kind of way out there for either player, but as you can see, just a very spread out map. Additionally, look around, there's no green cover anywhere on the map at all. Uh, it's just all yellow cover. So uh, these tactical marines will have a hard time dealing with uh, the big shooters that we're likely to see uh, from this orc player. And while we're looking at the players, let's go ahead and introduce them. Mr. Holy Hammer as our Orc Warboss over here on the red side. Holy Hammer, obviously very well known, very solid player, tends to play just about anything and play it well. And on the other side, as I mentioned earlier, we have WN Nayam, and hopefully I'm saying that right, but if not, uh, it wouldn't be the first time I've mispronounced someone's name, as our Space Marine Force Commander. So we're going to have to see how that goes. Uh, Force Commander versus Warboss. Force Commander actually does a good job of kind of countering that uh, that initial squad independence problem because he can kind of roam around on his own uh, and cause a lot of trouble himself being such the beast that he is these days. Anyways, we're seeing uh, Nayam going straight for this central contested power, trying to lock that down, get him a little extra power income right out of the gate. And uh, pretty standard build order. We're seeing Holy Hammer with that standard double shoot a build. And uh, Nayam popping his power node right off the bat, so we're probably not going to see a second scout squad from him. Which is curious considering that this is such a spread out map. You normally want to see that second scout squad as a space marine player. But uh, against double shoot, a double scout does not always work out too well. So on this bottom part of the map with the two natural VPs spread out here and these wrecks in the back. Since they are so far away from the rest of the resources on the map. You can see all the power and wreck uh, is over on the other side of the map. 
you generally see this battle right here, which is just the two capping squads for either players. Uh, in this case, of course, we're seeing scouts and sluggers duke it out. Uh, luckily, Naim sent his force commander up top to deal with the shooter boys, and it looks like he's pushing up pretty well. And uh, the tactical marines and scouts will make short work of, uh, of those slugger boys over there. In the meantime, looks like Naim might not be paying attention to his force commander as he wanders a bit too close to that orc base turret, and he does get suppressed. And now being between two squads of shooter boys, he's just going to have to go ahead and uh, fall back from the main battle right there. In the meantime, uh, looks like uh, Naim is getting a, doing a good job of controlling VPs. He's going to at least get a decap on this. But uh, unfortunately, he hasn't capped really any of his side of his map. His, uh, nor his secondary wreck and power over there are... Uh, are just sitting barren right now. Uh, in the meantime, uh, one of the big big shooters have already been upgraded. Shotguns go down on one of the other shooters. Lose a scout model, but these tactical marines should be able to push off the shooters. Uh, however, we have some in, uh, slightly wounded slugger boys coming in, and uh, those tactical marines are going to have to be very careful as they're already pretty beat up themselves. Luckily, that's bought Naim enough time to purchase himself a Devastator and fill up his power generator farm, as uh, Holy Hammer has also done. So looking pretty equal there, except uh, as you can see, Holy Hammer's been using his warballs to go ahead and capture all of his points on the map. Uh, we can see Naim got himself a little bit of a VP lead right there at the beginning, but that's not really a big deal. At the beginning of the match, you're normally looking to uh, get your requisition points matured and up, and... Uh, Naim just really doesn't have any of that right now, so we'll have to see how this pays off for him in the long run. So, uh, Devastator on the field. Those sluggers must have known something was up. They were pretty beat up, weren't going to engage those attacks in melee, deciding to fall back right now. Now we see both big shooters are upgraded, and uh, the Force Commander and Warboss actually look like they're just kind of passing ships in the night here. Uh, walked right past each other to decap each other's points right there. And uh, in the meantime, Tax and the Devastator are trying to get a good angle on these shooter boys right now. And uh, looks like they may, they probably are able to spot uh, that Devastator right there. Yeah, they can definitely see it. But anyways, trying to just check the Fog of War. I like to check the Fog of War and get a perspective of what each player can see right there. So Devastator's getting ready to open up on those Warballs, but Warboss hits the Angry Bits, charges in, knocks them all to the ground. And with these two squads of big shooters coming in and the Stomp going down, those Devastators are just going to have to make a run for it. Uh, fortunately, it looks like they're actually going to get out of there with, uh, with no model losses, which is uh, very nice. Anyways, oh, a Tactical Marine goes down. You can see the shooters kind of shot through this little ledge right here. Always something to keep in mind is the ledges of this little piece of terrain right here. The range squads can actually shoot through a little bit further than you would expect most of the time. Uh, so always something to keep in mind when you're trying to dodge around that corner from, uh, from melee units or ranged units. In the meantime, we have scouts getting engaged by sluggers trying to get out of position. Meanwhile, uh, Devastators getting suppressed by aiming what's that? Two squads of shooter boys trying to take out that lead model desperately so they can get this gen bash in, but it is holding on. Oh, it is so stubborn. Uh, Tactical Marines lose a model to the war boss now upgraded with his bang bang hammer, which uh, does some very nasty power melee damage. And uh, that Devastator actually very fortunately probably saved uh, Niam. That's a pretty solid victory for him because if that Devastator had gone down, he probably would have lost his power farm to those double shooters and the war boss here. Uh, I don't think uh, the beat up force commander would have been able to deal with all three of those squads on his own. And it would have cost Naim that power farm. So very fortunate for him as both players go into tier two. VP is just about tied up as the war boss snags himself a scout and then falls back after taking a face full of devastator fire. So it looks like that very wounded devastator gonna go ahead and capture that top victory point and uh, try to bring back uh, that VP advantage that Naim had right at the beginning. Only about uh, 50 points down right here. And uh, now with both of those big shooters coming back out, Scouts and Force Command are going to have to go ahead and fall back. Now, uh, Naim's in a pretty good position. He's not down many VPs. You're always kind of down at least a few VPs as Space Marine, I feel, in the first tier. So just so long as you're staying even with your uh, with your tech, with your opponent, you can generally do pretty well. He's done a good job of keeping this power farm at. He stopped that tier 1 gen bash just barely with his Devastator, and again using it uh, to stave off these big shooters. 
So uh, doing a great job there. Sluggas, again, as I was saying, we're going to see those scouts and Sluggas probably just running back and forth trying to decap VPs down here. And uh, all things considered, it looks like Niam has a slight lead here. Going to get that Razor back out uh, probably right around the same time as that truck pops in. Uh, so both players will have the transport on the field. So we're going to have to see which player uses that better to their advantage. Of course, the Razorback has a pretty excellent damage output against these basic orc infantry squads, uh, which, of course, the truck does not have itself. And uh, as of right now, Holy Hammer won't have anything to do with that Razorback, whereas, of course, Nahum can upgrade uh, either to a LAS Cannon, Rocket Launchers, or Power Fist. Uh, so he has lots of options to deal with that truck when it hits. But uh, I really doubt he'll go for the last cannon as he's going to need the suppression to deal with uh, the melee and range squads of Holy Hammer. Holy Hammer gets a 3-0 cap right now. Uh, Nahum's just holding on while he can. Scout's coming in, uh, fully upgraded with infiltration, sergeant, and shotguns. A nice looking grenade taking out four slugga boys right there and scaring them off. But it looks like the force commander in the meantime, while he was microing, that got a little bit too close to those shooters. And he is going to go down. There he goes. So, uh, excellent kill. Those shooters hop right into that truck and roll out. Uh, in the meantime, we're seeing the tactical marines get upgraded with the rocket launcher. And uh, they could hop in that Razorback and chase down that truck, but I think what he's probably going to go for is just going to force him to react and try to take out this power farm with those rocket launchers. Uh, trying desperately to get this uh, decap right now, but oh, a perfect stomp knocks those tacks off of there. And uh, we're going to see that uh, Bang Bang Hammer doing some nasty damage right there. In the meantime, Shooters moved in on the power farm, once again trying to get a gen bash, but that Devastator staving them off time and time again. Uh, and now we're seeing the Razorback and Scouts pour fire into those Shooters. They are reinforcing, but it is costing Hammer some wreck. He only managed to take out one of those uh, generators, and it looks like, oh man, just barely gets that Shooter squad out with one model and uh, very few HP right there. Unfortunately, this truck's in a pretty strange predicament right now. He's in the one corner of the map that he can't really escape from getting shot by these rockets. One rocket, if they get another shot off, oh no, it's stopped to turn around. That's never what you want to see when you're trying to escape that AV shot, and there goes the final rocket. Swerving out of control, shooter boys immediately have to retreat out of that wreckage. And uh, excellent play. Unfortunately, this Razorback doesn't look like it's targeting the right squad. It may have been able to finish that shooter boy off. But uh, instead, it looks like it's just going to go for that power. So uh, always something to keep in mind, actually, now that we saw that, is uh, when you don't want your vehicle to do that turnaround, when you're trying to uh, trying to get out from under that uh, AV fire, always try to use shift click and just click little bits at a time across the map uh, while you're trying to escape. That will generally prevent them from trying to do that U-turn and uh, haul away and take a couple extra AV shots. So just something to keep in mind there. A little trick I picked up, I think, from an old uh, Game Replays uh, tutorial. In the meantime, uh, Nahum's doing a great job here uh, pushing this power. Holy Hammer's going into Tier 3 for some reason. He really should have either purchased that truck back or gotten a Weird Boy or something, I feel like. Because Nahum is taking advantage of Holy having only three squads currently on the field and uh, is decapping both of his powers netting himself an extra five generators if he manages to get both of these captures, which it looks like he just might, as these tacticals are upgraded with a sergeant and RA level two. Warboss charging in right now. Oh, but gets caught on a piece of terrain. Unfortunately, he's going to be able to one-shot these uh, Devastators, as we can see with that, uh, with that hammer right there, as they try to retreat. He's level two, and with that bang-bang hammer, he makes short work of those Devastator models. So very expensive losses right there. In the meantime, we had some sluggas down here trying to break some more generators with their slugger knob. Uh, Razorback did eventually deter them, but it cost, uh, cost Nahum a couple generators. All in all, that's very insignificant when it comes down to it, because Nahum does have all five of Holy Hammer's generators right now. Holy Hammer doing a good job of uh, taking out those VPs. You can see he's sitting at about 200 point VP lead, but right now has no map. You can see all he has is one VP and three rec points for himself. So he really needs to get back in the game and push out this power. Uh, we're going to have to see if this tier 3 tech worked out for him uh, instead of getting that weird boy or truck that he really should have grabbed in tier 2 to try to stop this push. The problem is he just had nothing to deal with this Razorback. And uh, people tend to disregard that Razorback a little too much, I think. They don't realize uh, how much damage it does. 
Uh, Holy Hammer's normally uh, very spot on with his builds, generally doesn't do any wacky builds or anything like that, but pushing into tier 3 a little early this time perhaps, and uh, now finding himself a little behind on the map control. Luckily for him, that quick push did allow him to get some knobs on the field, they already have the meaner and greener upgrade, they're going to charge right past that Devastator, and uh, allow them to get behind that Razorback. Once that Devastator retreats, they'll have free reign on the field, and uh, in the meantime, Nahum himself is pushed into tier 3, and you can see he's purchased himself some Terminator Force Commander armor and the Terminator Flamer right there, and we can just see that as it destroys all the generators right now. So uh, a brutal loss right there for Hammer. He finally tried to get his, uh, his generator farm back, and unfortunately the Force Commander completely denied that. Blew up his own generators with that area of effect flame ability that comes with that uh, Terminator armor. So anyways, uh, Razorback doing a good job of kiting those knobs around and uh, just constantly pouring fire into them. That Razorback's level 3, grabbing its extra armor as well, trying to keep that on the field. Level 3, that Razorback must have quite a few kills under its belt between Sluggas and Shooter Boys. Knobs once again popping that Mina and Greena, trying to get some shots on that Razorback as it falls back, but I don't think they're quite going to catch it. Force Commander himself retreating right now after destroying all those generators. Gonna have to retreat through some knobs, but I think he'll have the HP. Yeah, he's got 700 HP. He'll be able to get through that pretty easily. Even at 100 damage a swing, those knobs couldn't quite finish him off. And in the meantime, uh, Nam's just constantly using this Razor back to harass these knobs. Excellent positioning with the Devastator, using that defensively to keep those knobs away. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Holy Hammer's just in a bad position right now. He did lose his Sluggas at some point here. And uh, unfortunately, I missed that. But, uh, you see, the problem with Knobs right now, he did tech into tier 3, but uh, he just doesn't have enough support uh, for that heavy unit right now. Uh, Nahum has just been running it all over the field with the Razorback Devastator, and uh, now he has, of course, his scouts back on the field, which will be able to fix up that Razorback and uh, cause some hurt to those Knobs. Obviously, the best way to deal with Knobs uh, is always using knockback and suppression, things like that. Uh, once Meaner and Greener is on, your only real weapon against them is knockback, so scouts can buy you a few precious seconds to try to wear through that ability. Holy Hammer's finally got his weird boy here, and uh, now you can see that Razorback is a lot less confident sticking around on the field. Uh, weird boy makes a nice shot on that, and Nob's now in position to tear it out. Unfortunately, the Razorback drove right through them, and they kind of hesitated there. But it looks like one more swing, and they'll be able to get it right now. They just need to get that last swing off. Are they going to do Warpath activated right now? And a daring chase while the Razorback tries to escape, but it stops and allows those knobs to get the final shot off right there. In the meantime, Warball's chopping through some uh, tactical Space Marines. If he would have gotten one more shot on there, probably would have gotten a second model. But, uh... Nahum's done a good job, held the map, even out these VPs, has a 2-0 cap right now, a Librarian on the field to help out with uh, this very slow Force Commander, uh, who's once again just been toasting generators. You can see the two generators that were up top here are now gone. Uh, with that Flamer, that's pretty much, uh, that can pretty much shut down any teching attempts right now for Holy Hammer. He's really going to either have to defend that generator and uh, take out that Force Commander. Oh, but Gate of Infinity, used by that Librarian, getting the Force Commander out of trouble after Mina and Greener was popped. So, uh, Nyam probably saving himself up for either a tank or some Terminators at this point, as once you hit Tier 3, that's all you see coming from those uh, Space Marines. Uh, nice looking war Vomit, getting that Force Commander stunned while those knobs beat up on him, and, uh, Weird Boy getting a little too confident going back in there, a little too quick. A couple knobs going down, very dangerous right now. Needs to pull those back as this Librarian and Devastator might be able to take them out. Oh, wow, and just as the last knob falls, Call the Boys activated. A full fresh squad of knobs comes out. Uh, Shooter Boys coming in on the flank right now. Could really use aiming what's that on that uh, Devastator to let those knobs charge in. Uh, but they decided instead just to use Mina and Greener. Uh, with a Space Marine Knows No Fear activated, they will make short work of those Shooter Boys. But once those knobs come into melee range, everything just has to fall back. Not much you can do against a full health squad of knobs once, uh, once they get into melee range as Space Marine. 
So Nayim ready, uh, probably ready to call in some sort of drop right now. Uh, definitely has the resources for some Terminators if he so chooses. Uh, nice looking grenade. Uh, Hammer was watching and ready for it. Uh, trying to use that weird boy to disrupt these scouts a little bit. But he's kind of just standing around. Finally takes a shot and knocks him over. Force Commander moving up the top side of the map once again on this Eastern BP. Uh, probably not going to be able to deal with all of this on his own, especially once those knobs come back down. And uh, Holy Hammer just trying his damnedest to get his power farm back up and keep this Force Commander at bay before he can uh, he can get in to destroy all that once again. So Holy Hammer now purchasing a second squad of knobs, uh, which is going to be pretty brutal as... Uh, Nyam only has really a Devastator and uh, and a Librarian to kind of try to deal with those and keep those under control. Uh, once again, Force Commander just teleporting right in, using that uh, burning ability right there. And uh, wow, Finn using the Librarian to uh, to use his, uh, sorry, Veil of Time. I kind of blanked on that for a second. That's what happens when you don't cast for a few weeks. And uh, got him out of there without taking any damage. So a uh, very frustrating play from the Force Commander. He's just using him exclusively to take out that power. And uh, in the meantime, Nobs and Warboss charging right into that Devastator. Veil of Time looks like was activated on them right there, but unfortunately they get suppressed anyways, and then knocked over by that weird boy. Uh, Warboss charges in, knocks over all of those uh, tactical Marines and starts ripping them apart. And uh, unfortunately, once again, with all these Nobs on the field, there's just not much that uh, Nime can do about that. And uh, an excellent push there by Holy Hammer. This tier 3 is finally working out for him, but uh, it took him a while. Got that second squad of knobs on the field, which are now roaming around on the bottom part of the map. Uh, Name is really going to have to commit more than just scouts to stop these knobs at this point. Uh, they are upgraded and level 3, but it looks like he's actually just going to ignore the knobs and possibly go for that uh, VP on Hammer's side of the map. So when you have those stealth units, always good to try to uh, lead those VPs out, especially when you can't deal with whatever squad is capping. Uh, oh man, the Force Commander almost taken out all of those shooter boys. They need to retreat right now. Oh, but oh, a nice looking flank by the Librarian. Drops the smite just as those shooter boys were about to escape. Holy Hammer loses one of his shooter boy squads. And in the meantime, the knobs are chopping in to that Force Commander who just decides to fall back in the long run. That Terminator Ar Armor Force Commander is uh, one of the most difficult heroes to take out when it comes down to it, as he does have Terminator Armor and can just retreat uh, when he finds himself in danger. So in the meantime, we did finally see Nyam purchase him a nice Tier 3 unit in the form of some Assault Terminators. Already upgraded those Lightning Calls to deal with the knobs. Uh, you really only want to keep those Thunder Hammers when you have vehicles on the field. So those Lightning Claw Terminators are going to be uh, a pretty big thorn in the side of the Knob Squad. It's going to have to commit more than just one Knob Squad to deal with that. And uh, those seem to be what are going to be running around the bottom for right now. In the meantime, Scout's trying to stealth out and get away. Uh, as there's no Knob on these Shooter Boys, it looks like they're going to be able to do it too. In the meantime, Plasma Tactical Marines obviously changing to that Plasma Gun since uh, they no longer need the rocket launcher for that uh, Orc Truck. And this Force Commander can do plenty of damage to generators without having to worry about missile launchers. Right now, everything uh, everything's coming to a head here as Nine pulls all his troops up against uh, these two squads of knobs. Uh, looks like the range squads are just falling back waiting to get the support of the Devastator and Force Commander, which are sitting over here on the top point right now. Uh, and uh, looks like those Terminators just got warped out uh, over with Gain of Infinity, that Librarian being used excellently this game so far, seeing all of his abilities used. And once again, the Force Commander just toasting away any hope that Holy Hammer has of Tekken up here. So uh, very difficult to hold your power at this point in the game. Nice use of over there, launching those knobs right on top of that Devastator. They are pretty beat up though. And uh, gotta watch that friendly fire on that uh, weird boy though. Uh, I don't want those knobs getting knocked over and uh, ruining all that potential DPS on those squads. In the meantime, the second squad of knobs getting pretty beat up as they fight those assault terminators. Call the boys used at the last second once again, bringing a fresh squad of knobs on the field. And these assault terminators gonna need to be very careful. Uh, they did have their uh, teleport still. 
Uh, excellent use of Walleye Brain, again using Gate of Infinity whenever he needs to, keeping that uh, Terminator teleport as a last resort to get them out of trouble. You pretty much never want to use that, especially with your melee Terminators, to, uh, to teleport in to a battle because you'll oftentimes find yourself in a tricky position. So uh, Nahum is doing a great job of keeping these stealth scouts running all over the map. Uh, finally, a knob on those shooter boys to detect those. Uh, 195 to 72 VPs right now. Holy Hammer on the back foot. And uh, Nahum sitting with a pile of resources right now. Could probably purchase himself a tank, but perhaps he's waiting uh, to drop a second squad of Terminators. Adding power generator. And uh, Holy Hammer just with no power to purchase himself anything bigger right now. Been really using all his resource to keep these knobs on the field and uh, reinforcing the one squad of shooter boys he has left from tier one. So I'm just not sure if these knobs are going to be able to live up to anything right now. Over Dare being used once again to instantly get that Devastator off the field. Gate of Infinity being used. Uh, that Librarian staying away from the battle to always be ready to pull something out if need be. Excellent positioning by Nahum throughout the game and dealing with these knobs very well as two squads of knobs can just be very dangerous for a Space Marine player. Tell, uh, Force Commander de got the decap, teleported out, and now dropping the Immolate on the ground, it looks like, once again. And uh, now both squads of knobs once again suppressed and taking some pretty heavy fire from some level 4 tactical marines and a level 3 devastator. That devastator is in a lot of trouble right now though, once again uh, finding itself on the other side of an over there under a pile of knobs. And uh, in the meantime they're going to turn around, activate meaner and greener and try to attack these assault terminators. I unfortunately don't think that that's going to work, especially with the war boss retreating now he can't call the boys and uh, those knobs in a lot of trouble. Looks like both squads managed to just barely get out with one and two units, a uh, total of three knobs escaping from two squads. That's just not going to work out. Uh, 72 to 148, uh, Hammer really just needs to make a push and get these VPs in his control. These shooter boys aren't going to be able to stand up against level 4 tactical marines at this point in the game. And Nahum does have a land raider coming onto the field. So, uh, not looking very good for Hammer at all right now. He's purchasing himself some commando knobs, or sorry, commando, just normal commandos, not knobs. And, uh, oh man, there's the end of the game right as I'm finishing up saying that, and right before uh, that Land Raider Redeemer comes onto the field. So, wow, excellent play by both players. Uh, I think Holy Hammer's main mistake there was just uh, going so light on the Tier 2, while uh, Nahum just kind of blazed through Tier 2 took out all of Holy Hammer's power, claimed it for himself, and then burned it all to the ground with the help of that infamous uh, Force Commander uh, Terminator Flamer. So once these Assault Terminators came onto the field, that kind of sealed the deal for all these knobs, and uh, Holy Hammer had just lost a bit too much at the beginning of the game to, uh, to really come back from that. Once his map control was gone and he had no power income, that was pretty much it as Name just forged ahead in that... Uh, in that very heavy tier 3 that the Space Marine has. So uh, anyways, great game, glad you enjoyed it. Here's that Librarian that did so much good for the Space Marine Army. Excellent support as always, he does provide. And uh, anyways, this was Red Ruby, signing off, I'll catch you guys next time.